presentation, so you're free to go ahead. Okay, thank you. Um, my name is Takaron Do, and I'm from the University of Venda. Um, I'm doing my PhD there under the supervision of Dr. Tawengwa, Professor Matala, and Dr. Nzala. So for today, my the title of my talk will be the quantification of routine in Moringa Olifera Lab in domesticated plants grown under non-cultivation systems in the Rembe district of Limpopo province using ultra high performance liquid chromatography, uh, quadruple time of, time of flight mass spec. So I'll basically just uh, take you through from the introduction um, through to, to, the, to the feature work and references. Um, so Moringa olifera is, is known as a miracle tree. This is mainly because it holds a variety of biological properties. And these, prior, these properties are characteristic of the phytochemicals that it holds. Um, which include glucosinolates, um, flavonoids, chlorogenic acids, and many more. Um, but then for, the, for this talk, we will mostly focus on flavonoids, um, which um, exist as either aglycones or, or glycosides. So in, within, within the flavonoid group, um, flavonoids are able to undergo glycosylation by um, from different sugars, meaning that um, the diversity of, of, of the flavonoids within Moringa olifera is increased. But then there are three sought after flavonoids, which are known to be pharmacologically active and bioavailable, um, which include quercetin rutinocyte, which is also known as sweetie, chiamphenol rutinocyte, and isohamnetin rutinocyte. So these are just structures of the flavonoids that I just mentioned. And this is the, the aglycone structure of, of the flavonoid, of which here we can see that the sugar that's attached here is the rutinocyte, which is a combination of glucose and remnants. And then what's uh, characteristic about these um, flavonoids is the attachment of, um, it's the presence of the different moieties within the aglycone backbone. So with a uh, camphoral rutinocyte, we find that we have we have an OH group which is attached in the in the four prime position, and then with the rutinocyte, uh, I mean with routine, we have another OH group which is attached on the third prime um, position, and then with isohamnetin, we've got a methoxy group which is attached within the the, the third prime position. So this is how um, we can differ differentiate between these uh, different flavonoids. But our, our main focus will be on routine, which is um, the most abundant of the, of the three flavonoids and it is highly bioavailable. It is also known for its uh, therapeutic and nutritional uses. And it also Holds a variety of pharmacological properties, which can include antioxidant activities, cardioprotective activities, anti-carcinogenic, and 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 many more. But that's just to name a few. So there's been um, a lot of controversy around the presence of routine in moringa olifera plants. Um, in a study by Hepto Merriam and and Vikis, he, he studied the closely related species um, Moringa stenopelata and Moringa olifera, and they found that um, Moringa, steno, Moringa stenopelata is capable of producing routine, while Moringa olifera does not produce routine. And then a similar study as well by Makita et al. They also studied um, Moringa ovalifolia and Moringa olifera, and they also found Moringa of valifolia to be routine producing, while Moringa olifera does not produce routine. And this then led, led them to conclude that Moringa olifera is incapable of producing routine. But then Makita et al. went on to study um, 12 different cultivars of Moringa olifera. 
and within those 12 cultivars, they only found three cultivars to be routine producing. And this led them to conclude that um, Moringa oleifera is cultivar specific. This then brings about an uncertainty um, to, to, to the community at large because um, for example, if you take me and I want to plant, I want to grow a moringa in my backyard. Now I'm not sure whether the, the plant that I'm going to be growing in my background actually contains protein so that when I need it to probably help me for whatever is, is uh, troubling me, will it be able to, 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 to attack that which um, it, needs to, it needs to attack in my body? So our aim is to quantify the routine from Moringa oleifera domesticated plants using LCMS. And this uh, will be done by firstly extracting metabolites in Moringa oleifera leaves um, using 80% methanol. And then after that, we analyze the, the, the metabolites in Moringa oleifera uh, in the leaves of Moringa oleifera, so we basically do a metabolite profile um, using LCMS, and then we quantified um, the, the, the routine in the leaf extracts of Moringa oleifera. Um, so firstly, we collected um, 130, we collected 130 sam uh, uh, leaf samples of Moringa oleifera from different households um, in different villages around uh, the member district, and then we 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 start dried them, and then extracting metabolites. Uh, we first grind um, the leaves to a powder, and then we mix the one gram of the leaves and twenty ml of methanol, eighty percent, and then we shake it overnight. Um, and this is where the metabolites are extracted. Um, thereafter, we centrifuged um, under those conditions given. And then after centrifuging, we transfer the, super, the supernatant to an append of tube, after which we filtered through a 0.22 micrometer filter into a vial, and then we sent it to the LCMS for analysis. Um, after analyzing the metabolites on the leaves of Moringa oleifera, we then quantified the amount of protein um, in these plants using LCMS. So this is um, a base peak chromatogram of a plant that does not produce routine. So what we would expect to see in a plant that does produce routine is to see a peak at MZ609, which is a representative of, of, um, of, the, of the routine. Um, and this is what we observed in a plant that uh, produces routine. So at this peak over here, I know it's not um, visible, but then this is where we see the 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 the, the peak at MZ six zero nine, which represents moringa, which means that this is a plant that is actually routine producing. So we then we we did uh, a quantitative study on all the hundred and thirty samples that that we collected. And from the 130 samples, we only found 15 of them to be routine producing. But then um, the amount of routine was, was varying throughout um, these, these 15 plants. So each plant had its own concentration of, of routine. So this is, an, this is the LC of the Moringa olifera, olifera sample of which we can see that um, this is the, 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 the fragment um, of, of, um, of the routine, which is, which, is quercetin, which is the quercetin aglycol. Um, and this is the MS of, um, of routine, of which we can see the parent mass at MZ609, which is the representative of, of the presence of routine. And then this is just the fragmentation pattern which shows that um, routine fragments to the other quercetin aglycone. So we concluded that, okay, in conclusion, 
we did a, a total of 130 Moringa Oliveira um, leaf samples, um, which we analyzed for the, for the presence of routine, uh, of which we only found 15 plants to be routine producing. So we concluded that, okay, Moringa Oliveira is therefore capable of um, producing a routine. However, there are factors that might be contributing to the production of routine in the Moringa Oliveira. Factors such as the maturity of the leaves, the environmental conditions, and also the genetic makeup of the, of the plants contribute to the production of routine in this type of plant. Um, future work will therefore be to, to study the genetic makeup of the routine producing plants and the non-routine producing plants just to see what exactly is it that is at play at play there. And then we can compare the amount of routine in leaves of the same level of maturity. Um, we can, we can combine fresh leaves and old leaves. And then from there, we combine in each class, we combine the, we, co we compare the amount of routine in that class of maturity of leaves. And then um, also to quantify the other retinocyte bearing flavonoids, um, that would be chiantheral retinocyte and isohamnetin retinocyte. Um, and these are the references that I used in this talk. And I would like to acknowledge my supervisors, the Department of Chemistry and the Department of Biochemistry from Univan, um, NRF, the Soul Foundation. And I'd like to thank the MSA for giving me this opportunity to present my work. Thank you. Thank you, that was well presented. Are there any questions from the floor? I don't see any in the blog. Right, I'm going to ask you a question. You've now pointed out that there's a potential for the lack of routine to be due to the age of the leaves or potentially the age of the tree or environmental factors. <clears throat> Were these not considered before the um, collection of the samples took place? No, um, when collecting the samples, we were just, uh, we didn't consider the, the maturity of the leaves and we also didn't consider the environmental conditions. So what we, just, what we wanted to say was to just see um, if the plants that are already growing in the in people's households, if they, they contain routine or not. Um, that, um, that can be something that um, can be done in the future that when we collect plants now, let's say we're collecting um, uh, leaves that are still fresh and from, from, from the same environmental conditions and then we can compare from there. Okay, do, do you not take something like the age of the tree into account? At, at this moment, no, we were, we were not, but then it's something that can be done in the future. Because I think that might play a role, but the environmental factors would definitely play a role. Yes. I know in one of our studies from many years ago on Sutherlandia, we found that from exactly the same plant, two years to six years apart that the composition of the different actives was quite different so we know that the the plant and the area and the ground conditions etc should be more or less the same but mm. it was just the environmental factors that had been in play had quite a it was a significant effect on the concentration of some of the compounds that were collected at the same time of the year. So we wouldn't have expected that. So it's just something that you should bear in mind. And I would suggest finding some way of, of aging the tree, maybe taking the diameter of the stem and maybe 
taking some information like are they harvesting the leaves or they're harvesting bark from it as other potential confounders in what you're finding um yes um thank you for for that recommendation and we will surely look into it okay are there any other questions either through the blog or from the audience right so there doesn't seem to be any okay here we go um a question from aaron okay well now we're starting to get some i see francis member asked also the leaves on the same tree are not of the same age to consider while sampling so those are just things I'm, I'm presuming that he has also been involved in some metabolic studies and then a second question is what was the percentage extraction of rutin in the trees that were producing it um okay we didn't we only looked at at the concept we only looked at the amount we didn't actually actually go into the the percentage of it so I guess that's something that we can also look into. Okay, D just another question that I've suddenly thought about is, did you actually check what your extraction reproducibility is like? So if you took leaves from the, the same tree and mixed them up and kind of randomized them and did different extractions, were you getting the same amount every time? Or is no, there a variance there? No, we only we only did it once um, with the methanol extraction. Okay, because you'd like to try and get some indication of your technical variance that you have. Okay. So if you do pick enough leaves that you can mix them up, randomize them, and and put them together then I think you, you'd be able to get some kind of idea whether the extraction is reproducible to within a percent or two, or Thank 20 you. or 50. So you'd have Thank some you. idea of what, what you're getting. Okay. 